welcome to the Duff Law Channel. This is The Duff Show. Today we have a very special, anonymous, uh, mysterious guest uh, by the name of what's, what she goes by on Instagram is tactical.bell. B E L L E. And um, it's an honor to have you here today. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started off with um, how did you come up with the Persona Tactical Bell or Bella? Or tell us how to, what's the right way to pronounce your, your name? Uh, it's Bell, B E L L E. And that's just my name. And the tactical portion came with um, that I just, my page kind of started off honestly around patriotic stuff, guns, tactical gear, all that kind of stuff. And that was really the main focus of my page when it started. Uh, since then, we've kind of evolved more into survival stuff, a lot of emergency prep, um, because I just feel like that's been becoming so much more important the way that society has been going lately. And also, it's a little bit more Instagram friendly because, as I'm sure most people know, um, Instagram is a little sensitive with the gun stuff. So we've been doing a little bit of shift on that. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I did notice you're real patriotic and... Uh... A little background on me. I'm a, a U- United States Marine Corps veteran, so you can know a little bit about who you're talking to. I'm a yeah. I was in the Marine Corps for a few years, did a couple combat deployments. So I'm all about the patriotism, and that's a. Uh, I think that's what struck my attention when I came across your page was all the all the patriotic posts and the American flags, and obviously all the the cool stuff that I've that I've been seeing. So I guess Thank you could you. consider me a fan right now. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, my yeah. boyfriend is actually also former Marine, too. So that's why we have so much patriotic stuff around the house. We've got, there's some Marine stuff around the house. I'm sure you've seen in, like, some of my videos. There's, uh, he was Force Recon Marine, so that, like, sometimes ends up popping up in the back. And usually um, I have a few Marines on my page, so they'll point it out. Awesome. That is too cool. Um, on to question number two, it's about uh, your content creation. So can you walk us through your content creation process uh, from your ideas, how you generate ideas to what you, how you come up with what you write on your posts and stuff? Yeah, definitely. Um, so my whole goal with the videos was kind of that they could reach everybody because I found with a lot of not necessarily survival stuff, but more especially with the radios and emergency preparedness, that the information, it was like so confusing unless you really already knew the terminology and were a part of that community. And I really wanted it to be something that everybody could be included in because a lot of these skills like aren't that difficult. You can break them down uh, fairly basic. So that was my biggest thing is trying to be really inclusive so that every video that I make anybody could just watch that video and understand what's going on. They don't have to know the terminology. They don't have to be in the industry. Um, So that's kind of where the base of all my videos comes from. And then in terms of ideas, usually ideas just kind of pop up because I'm a super outdoorsy person. I'm always out hiking and doing different stuff. Um, So we'll think of like, oh, we should do a fire one. We should do this. And usually I have an idea of what I want to do from something that either I know from my experiences or my boyfriend knows from his experiences. And all the content I do, I double check it against usually military handbooks. And when you start reading those, there's so much information. So then I just get like this plethora of information for more content that I want to create, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. And that actually, I'm sure for anyone listening, that's going to be uh, like reassuring, you know, to know that you're, you're, you're actually double, double and triple checking all of the information that you put out there, you know, before... Yeah. No, you know, that's one of the biggest things because I have seen so much misinformation and I even deal with having to remove so much misinformation in the comments section of uh, my page on survival skills and emergency preparedness because my biggest concern is like when you're talking about emergency preparedness, this could be somebody's like life or death situation. And if you're out putting out misinformation, it could possibly cost somebody their life. So I'm really adamant about double checking. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. Resources. Um, and also just removing the incorrect information on that too. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, you're exactly right. It's definitely nothing to be playing around with. Yeah. Um, that moves us on to the next topic, patriotism. Your profile suggests a strong sense of patriotism. 
how um how does this influence your content and the message that you are trying to convey um i think the biggest thing is for one i'm very open about like i don't get too political on stuff but i am very open about my patriotism because i think it's something that you should be proud of it should be more talked about and I know a lot of people have this sense of like, oh, somebody's going to judge me if I'm wearing like a patriotic shirt or if I'm wearing like a pro Second Amendment shirt. And so I really try to like show all of that, be very proud of it and explain everything too, because I feel like, again, with that, there's so much misinformation and so much, I don't know why, but I feel like there's more hatred towards this country and patriotism than I've ever seen before. So yeah, it's I really to- sad. It is. It's really sad. And so I try to be really open and talk about it and um, talk about it from my perspective, too, of things that I've gone through. Because, again, like I said, having um, a boyfriend that was in the military, having family that was in the military and all the things you go through with that, um, I think makes you more patriotic. And sharing those stories with people makes other people realize, like, oh, okay, patriotism isn't such a bad thing. Yeah, I I totally agree with that point of view, um, saying, you know, how it's people are kind of afraid to wear, you know, patriotic colors and stuff. It's I really think it's kind of, you know, it's it's sad that that's the reality that we're in now. You know, it's it's and and every time I hear that or think about that, I'm always thinking, how did we even get to this this state, you know, where where people are? Because yeah. when I see people walking on the street, I'm like, I would never think based on like a flag they were wearing or something like it would have to be really, really offensive for me to think like, okay, that's like inappropriate to wear. But I would never be offended by somebody wearing a flag. I would never hate somebody for wearing it or speak down to somebody. Um, it's just crazy to me, especially in yeah. your own country. Exactly. Especially in your own country. It doesn't, it's just so much. Uh, hatred of I feel like patriotism spreading around these days yeah no it's a huge thing and I've been trying to also create a community where it is positive too so that you feel like because I think sometimes people feel like oh I'm the only one and people are going to judge me um, because of it especially if you maybe live in a more liberal state um so to create a community of like hey we support you you're not the only one makes people feel a little bit better, feel a little bit more confident, like there's other people out there that are still patriots. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's good. I'm glad you're doing it. And, um, yeah, that's what I'm trying to to stick towards, too, is, you know, being pro-America, being pro-patriotic. But uh, myself, like you said, I I don't get too much into politics or anything, but it's sad that, you know, being patriotic and pro-America automatically for the opposing side means you're being political. (laughs) Oh, I know. That's the craziest thing to me, too. It's like, if you wear an American flag shirt, everybody, like, thinks you're this far-right, crazy, whatever. Like, everybody should be patriotic, whether you're on the right Mm -hmm. or the left. We all live in America. We should all be patriotic. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. On to another topic. Um... Some of your favorite projects or collaborations. Are there any special? Are there any specific projects or collaborations that you've enjoyed uh, most um, doing some work for your Instagram page? Oh, that's hard. Um, I would say there's actually one that I haven't done yet, but it's we're coming out within about the next week here that I'm really really excited about. Um, I started working with this company called Phaser, and when they initially reached out to me, it was just looked like a pepper spray product, and I was like, okay, that's cool. Like, everybody has pepper spray. I have a pepper spray on my keychain. Most girls have them. It's cool. It's just like whatever, and then I got on the phone with them, and their pepper spray product is actually this super high-tech thing where it's pepper spray, but it also has the option that when you hit the button it will contact five of your emergency contacts that you've put in your phone and send them your GPS tracking location at the moment to say like, Hey, I'm in danger. Here's where I am. That's cool. Yeah. And it also leaves like a die on the person for like 24 hours. So it makes it easier for police. 
it also like I think it flashes a bright light sounds an alarm all of that but I was just really shocked because it just looks like this little pepper spray that goes on your keychain um and so I thought that GPS tracking thing was like awesome especially for yeah. women especially for like college age girls so that's something I'm super psyched about that we have coming up in the next week or so it sounds kind of like uh do you know what an EPIRB is yeah it sounds kind of like one of those but for like everyday carrying exactly yeah it's super easy to carry they have holsters you can um get for it or like like i said i like to just keep my pepper spray like on my keychain yeah. but they have a few like that which is is super cool that's 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 pretty awesome yeah. is that uh probably one of your favorites that's coming up what about one of your favorites that you've done in the past in the past um in terms of like collaborations and stuff like that. Yeah, or just it's your favorite thing you made a video about. Um, well, I would say in general, one of my favorite things that I've done videos about is the climbing stuff. Um, doing any kind of like uh rappelling stuff like that because I think those are skills that are like so easily learned but haven't been taught very much. Yeah. Um, I have a really cool video that I'm planning on redoing because I want to make it even better quality if I can about how you can like uh, use a Prusik to ascend or you can use it to descend as well. And it's super easy to tie. I mean, super basic, anybody could do it. So that's probably one of my favorite things. That's just like a cool, super easy skill um, that I got to learn and kind of teach to people out there. Yeah, that's um, climbing stuff. I was trying to get into that um, a few years back. Um, but uh, how long have you been climbing? Um, so not that long, honestly, only probably for about two years. Um, I'm not like, I wouldn't consider myself like the, a super expert climber, but, um, I've gotten so much teaching and stuff again, luckily because of what my boyfriend is, he's climbed a lot of different, um, mountains and stuff like that through different foundations since he's gotten out of the Marine Corps. So because of all those oh, nice. things that he's gotten to do, I've gotten to be a part of a lot of that and learn a lot of his mountaineering skills. Um, that's made me become more advanced in terms of like not tying and climbing and all things like that. But before that, I had like zero experience um, yeah. with any kind of or anything. Very cool. Yeah, I've never um, never gotten too too far into it. I've I only got to do the uh, some of the indoor climbing places, uh, like one in St. Petersburg, Florida, and. Um, okay. But yeah, that one that one was pretty fun. But I learned that day how challenging and uh, strenuous it actually is. You got to get in a different type of being in shape for that. Oh yeah, I know. When I first started it, I was like, I was getting so frustrated. Even just the rappelling, I was getting so frustrated with the beginning, and like my hands were getting like rope burned. It was it was. Oh crazy. man, the hang of it. It's like then then you're good to go but yeah at first i i was not a fan at the beginning <laughs> i will say uh, did your um so, so you said your boyfriend has climbed a lot of mountains what which ones have you gotten to what have you gotten to go do with uh with your boyfriend um well we're actually planning a climb right now we're going to be climbing hopefully in the next few months here we're trying to get our tickets for it we'll see if we'll be able to get into it uh but we want to climb mount whitney um, so oh. that's kind of what we're training for right now is to hopefully be able to do that climb. And um, we're just figuring out, again, you got to be able to get into it and get tickets. And uh, we want to bring our dog. So that's the other thing, too, is if we can if we could bring him along. Very cool. That sounds like quite the challenge. Yeah. So we're excited. Very cool. Um, what type of audience engagement? Uh, how do you connect with your audience while maintaining your Anon anonymity um i try to connect with my audience as best that i can it's definitely gotten harder i mean i've been so lucky these past few months um we just reached like a hundred thousand followers a few days ago and so which i've been like super stoked about it's been amazing yeah congratulations I, I meant to say congrats on that uh, 100k that's uh that's a big deal 
Thank you. Yeah, I was I'm super excited about it. I'm super grateful for it. Um, the only thing is it, it definitely makes it harder because I always try to connect with my followers. I appreciate them so much. Um, I appreciate their feedback and a lot of them come and ask me questions and I, I try to be as active as I can in terms of answering anybody's questions. But it has gotten harder definitely with getting a bigger following just because I get so many messages, honestly, a lot of spam messages. Um, so I'm always trying yeah. to filter but I do try to make a point of responding to comments when I can. I do try to make a point of uh, interacting in terms of responding to direct messages and stuff like that with my followers, especially a lot of the ones that have been around here for a long time. Um, so I do keep that connection. So they're like, okay, this is, this is an actual person instead of just being, you know, this random page that nobody knows about. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, definitely one of the biggest challenges I see on Instagram most of the time is filtering out who the robots are and, and who the actual people are. Oh yeah. I know it's, it's gotten so out of hand with Instagram. It's crazy. And so, yeah, that ends up being half my time is like, I'm just trying to get through the hidden request of who's a real person and who's not. Yeah. Do you, um, do you, is Instagram your m main primary platform or is there any other platforms that you post content on that you'd like to share um i'm also on tiktok my username is it's the same it's tactical bell same as it is on instagram i okay. just started tiktok honestly about like two or three months ago i want to say i've been on instagram for about a year tiktok only a couple months um and oddly enough tiktok has been more lenient with me on the gun content than instagram has um so that's why i've gone more to posting stuff on tiktok as well just because I don't get flagged every time yeah. I post anything that shows any kind of ammo. I mean, if I even show ammo, I get flagged on Instagram for it. I um, posted a video. It was an old video on TikTok uh, of me shooting a pistol. And it got flagged on, on TikTok. I was like, oh, man, it's, it got taken down. I got uh, a strike or whatever it's called. Oh. And after that, and, and I every any video won't get any more than like 200 views now. I'm like, oh no, what did I do? <laughs> oh no, yeah, you ruined oh, it. Oh man, early. yeah, they ruined it. I, I, it was just yeah. a quick little clip of me just shooting a pistol at the at the range, and I was like, oh man, that's yeah, not... that's crazy. And usually, I like I've had good luck with the peeling stuff on TikTok. I will say they've taken some stuff down. But kind of like how you got on the bad list of TikTok, I got yeah. on like the bad list of Instagram where like if I post anything, I see people post stuff at the range all the time. If I post anything that even shows ammo or hints at it, they're like yeah. on top of me the same day. I've had to take down so much of my gun content um, on Instagram. There's hardly anything on there with guns now. Man. Yeah, that's uh, I learned my lesson. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it's wild um let's see what do we got on to next um challenges uh i guess we kind of just talked about one of the challenges um but on the flip side of challenges what are some of the most rewarding aspects of being this of having this uh online persona tactical bell bell um, i think the most rewarding parts of it are, again, the people that I get to work with um, that direct message me because I get a lot of questions and I've really been trying to tap into this more. I get a lot of questions from men that are like, hey, I'm looking for something that my wife can carry with her to defend herself, but maybe she's not comfortable with a gun yet. Or I'm looking for something for my daughter who's gone away to college, but she's not comfortable carrying a gun. What can I do? And so I get a ton of those messages and I've really been able to go through and talk to them about different um, self-defense options that are non-lethals. I'm, again, I'm a really big Second Amendment supporter. I love guns, all of that. I'm also really big on the non-lethals though because I know some people just aren't comfortable with guns and also not every situation calls for, for a gun. If somebody's like running away, stealing my TV, I don't want to shoot them and kill them, I, you know, but I might want to stop them. So, um, that has probably been the most rewarding thing is just being able to help those people out with options. I know I've had a lot of women um, tell me that they are fans of the pepper ball guns or um, people that have told me they've gone out and bought them for their wives. And so that's probably one of the biggest things I'd say. That is pretty cool. 
Yeah, just um, even being able to provide uh, the pepper ball type stuff for my uh, my family, I, I feel like that's been kind of rewarding because, uh, you know, my mother was one struggling with the same situation. You know, she wants something to defend herself but doesn't want to, like, kill anybody, you know. Yeah. So I was like, well, you know, you can get this, and I got it for her, you know, showed her how to use it and everything, and she was like, wow, this is uh, – this is perfect, <laughs> you know, because it yeah. looks like it looks like a real gun too. So yeah, even just it, even just having it is, you know, kind yeah, of gives you that extra I, sense of security. Exactly, and you can get the ones you can get the orange one if you don't want it. To, some people are like, I don't want it to look like a real gun. Other people are like, I do want it to look like a real gun. So they have both options out there. Yeah, I've had honestly all positive responses from it, and I mean anything that can make people feel a little bit safer because. At least from my experience, I feel like so many people push so hard on like you have a gun or you have nothing or like you're like there's something wrong with you if you don't want to carry a gun. And to me, it's like I get it being a young girl and stuff like that, that maybe you're not comfortable with a gun yet. Maybe you haven't been around guns most of your life, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't have, you know, an option yeah. to help defend yourself with. Yeah, exactly. For sure. The... um. You know what's a crazy thing about guns is my older brother he's um in the navy and he's he's uh he had on base housing with his family but he was he's not allowed to have firearms on the base. Oh. Yeah. They have to keep them in the um armory. Uh I'm not sure where if they could have done that, but um, okay. he he just wasn't allowed to have them at his house. That's crazy. Yeah, like him and his wife and his kids. You know, I was like, so that was another instance where I got somebody one of those less lethal pistols. I was like, well, you can have this at least. <laughs> yeah, at least you have yeah. something. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I knew they couldn't have them in the barracks. They had to keep them in the armory. But mm -hmm. I would think, like, if you have a house with kids and a wife and stuff like that, it's like, come on. Yeah, right? It just, it just sounds crazy to me. Yeah. It's, especially because it's a military base and you're in the military, you know? Like, <laughs> what? Well, you can't have a gun? This makes no sense. Oh, I know. This I know, you crazy. can't have a gun. But then they managed to, I think it was over in Jordan or something. What did they just have a a drone fly over and drop a bomb on base. So somehow I, they I heard I heard that that drone was hacked. Like there was another drone flying behind the US drone that hacked it. And I don't I don't know. I I, just, I don't know yeah, for I sure. The, I hadn't read the full story on it, but honestly, I mean, I, again, I try not to get too much into the politics or the conspiracy theories and stuff. Yeah. But so much has been happening with our military lately, even like oh, yeah. the two Navy SEALs that recently passed away. Um, just these crazy things and showing the faces of some of the Delta Force guys at the White House. So much of the stuff has been happening with the military where you're like, what, what is going on here? Because yeah. none of this should be happening. What happened exactly. to the Navy SEALs that shouldn't have happened. Um, no way. So. Yeah, that was mind blowing to me hearing about Navy SEALs being lost at sea. Like, what on earth? Like, there's there's got to be way more to that story. Oh, there has to be. And again, I don't like to like assume or be a conspiracy theorist because I wasn't in the situation. But my boyfriend, yeah. he was a recon marine. A lot of times they would drop in from the helicopters and the um, SEALs go in from the boats. And he was explaining the situation. He's like, they get off the boat. And they climb up a ladder. Like, if you fell down, you would, like, almost fall back in the boat. Or you fall in the water right there and people see you. Like, yeah. there's more that went on. And that's yeah, especially that for out. two of them. You know, two of them to get lost. Like, even just one. You know? The, I know. This, every, 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 like, your boyfriend, I'm sure, has told you about, you know, every military squad. You know, that's the main thing. Like, having each other's back. You know, you always know where so, your squad mates are, you know? Yeah, it just, I know, it just seems, it's crazy to me. It's like, and I, I try not to bring up too much about it, like on social media, because it drives me crazy every time I see the post yeah. on it. But I try not to bring it up because I don't want to discredit them or anything. I feel horrible for them. I feel horrible for their oh, family. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
but I mean, there needs to be a little bit more transparency about all the stuff that's been going on. I mean, how often do all these accidents happen? Same with how they accidentally showed the guy's faces at the White House. Like, come on, that's, Jeez, that's yeah. not an mm-hmm. It's not okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's not, not okay. All right. Yeah. Um, so how about we move on to a slightly different topic? We'll go with uh, variety in your content. Um, what type of what, what type of scope of content are you looking for? Is, is it more leaning towards the climbing stuff or more towards the uh, prepping or survival? Or is it kind of all encompassing of all of those categories? I would say it's kind of all encompassing. And the reason for that being is just because all of the skills can be applied in emergency situation. Like I think a lot of people think of survival skills as in like being able to start a fire or even the rope stuff as using that in some kind of survival situation where like your plane crashes and you're in the, stuck in the middle of nowhere, which is true. It, it would be great for that. But also people don't realize how quickly things go bad in simple natural disasters and where a lot of those skills would be valuable just for your basic natural disasters that happen um, all over the world. So that's kind of really the thing I've been tackling and trying to like explain to people is you don't have to be preparing for the end of the world. You don't have to be expecting for your plane to go down, but even just for a natural disaster to happen, like the Maui fires that just happened, all of these skills would have been so helpful to know. And um, Oh have. yeah. Yeah, definitely. So how about a uh, little bit of behind the scenes can give us a little glimpse as to what your process is to, you know, before you start recording, before the cameras start rolling, like what types of equipment you use or where do you like to go shoot specifically or things like that? Yeah. Yeah. So I honestly, I just use my iPhone to shoot all my content and I should probably get a better camera. I should probably invest in a nicer camera. I've been wanting to. Um, but I just use my iPhone and a tripod most of the time, or sometimes I'm too lazy to carry my tripod. So it's just being like sat up by rocks in the dirt somewhere. But um, I usually like to go out onto like hiking trails, anything like that, and have like a good outdoor environment. Because again, most of my stuff is like I'm starting a fire or something like that. Um, and I usually try to practice quite a few times before we go out and do it just to make it look smooth and I think people don't realize that, you know, a 10 second video takes a lot longer than a 10 second video because oh, yeah. uh, you mm-hmm. having to do it so many times because half the time I'll do it right the first time, but the camera will be at a weird angle or you can't see mm-hmm. it, especially if teaching something. Um, so it ends up being quite a few cuts just from that alone. Yeah. So uh, you're, you're doing, learning a lot of uh, trial and error. Well, learn, learning a lot about uh, film production and, all that just by trial and error is what it seems like. Yeah, that's, and that's honestly the most annoying part. Like, the easiest part is starting the fire. The most annoying part is trying yeah. to get a good <laughs> Yep, that's right. Uh, like, the most time. <laughs> Say that again. I think I missed it. Oh, I said that's just the most time-consuming part of the whole thing. But, oh, yeah. but yeah, that's pretty much all my, I don't get too crazy into, I know some people have really nice cameras. They have really nice setups. I'm working, working up to that. Um, we'll get there. But right now I just use my iPhone and we pretty much just go out into nature. A lot of times I'll try to do them when we're out hiking or different things like that. Yeah. A lot of times um, I've used so much, eat so much different types of gear uh, throughout um, my time you know with video and going along with the evolution of technology and stuff uh, most of the time i figured you know upgrading comes with a lot more headaches (laughs) you gotta gotta learn how to use a whole bunch of different new things and that is a it's a learning curve of all in, in its own most of the time is what i've noticed yeah, that's exactly what I've had, even just using a GoPro or anything like that, because I do have a GoPro, which I don't use for film stuff, really, but uh, mm-hmm. I have one for, like, when we go down to the beach and stuff, and even that, just using it versus using my iPhone, because of the way TikTok and Instagram are set up, it just makes it so difficult, because the format's yeah. not always the mm-hmm. sometimes it looks awkward, I can't see what's going on, like, yep. what's yep. what I'm so many different like. variables. Yeah, and just makes it worse. So I'm like, whatever. I'm just gonna use my. Yeah, just yeah, just yeah. I have this GoPro. I'm just gonna put it in my bag, though. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> this is useless little brick. <laughs> yeah. Let, maybe get some videos underwater or something. <laughs> exactly. That's really the yeah. only thing I use it for is like if we're down at the beach or something like that. But again, the formatting just on it is not great um, for Instagram or TikTok, or especially if you're trying to match it with like a trending audio and stuff. You got to really video that stuff in Instagram or TikTok. Yeah. Um, I got, uh, we got time for one more question and then I'll think we'll start closing. But um, inspiration. Um, do you want to mention any individuals or experiences that have inspired you to uh, go this route that you're going with all your content? Yeah. So I initially especially like i said before being a young girl and stuff like that you're always concerned about safety especially on college campuses or anything like that and i had an issue in my past which was like continued for years on with this stalker and it's always made me feel really unsafe especially because i'm like five foot three like 110 pounds it's like not very hard to just pick me up and walk away with me if you really <laughs> wanted to yeah. um, so <laughs> I, I feel like it was even more important for just women in general and even children to teach them those self-defense skills. And I've been really lucky um, with my boyfriend's background that he's taught me so many of uh, those skills. And that's really what inspired me to want to share it with other people because he was teaching me all these things. And I was like, I wish this was taught to me earlier. I wish this was taught to everybody. This is so important, especially for women. Um, and it's just made me feel a lot more confident and okay being on my own because I a lot of times I'm hiking alone with my dog and different things like that so just having that skill set and understanding and even just awareness that I've gotten learning from him has really helped me a lot in my own confidence and skills and I just wanted to share it with more people so that's kind of how it ended up on Instagram that is awesome well ladies and gentlemen this has been wonderful having tactical bell Bell or Bella? I'm sorry. Bell. I'm, I'm, Bell? No, you're good. Is it Bell? Bell, yeah. All right, tactical Bell. <laughs> um, on on the show today. Um, thanks for stopping by. This is the Duff Law YouTube channel. Uh, the Duff Town Show is sponsored by the Business LLC, which is my company. And you can go over to our website, thecanvasbusiness.com, to support veterans and to support the business. And uh, as you can see on the screen, I got Tactical Bell's Instagram page up. You can go over there, go give her a follow, like her pages. And don't forget, forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and go to the description of the video to find the link to canvasbusiness.com to pick you up some art some canvas art thanks a lot tactical bell it's been okay, wonderful chatting you. with you you too you, you, uh, do you have anything else you want to mention before we go ahead and end this recording uh, nope I think that's all I think we've covered everything alrighty we'll go ahead and end it okay. right there <laughs>